Good morning! Let's continue with our lesson. Alright, next, accounting for sales. Sales are supported by sales invoice. The sales invoice of the seller is the purchase invoice of the buyer. Sales of merchandise can be on cash basis or on credit. When the sales is for cash, the seller receives cash in exchange for his merchandise. When it is on credit, the seller acquires a receivable from the buyer. So say for example, assume that Dagupan Trading sold merchandise to Tony Santos for 50,000 cash. So cash sales, very simple. Debit cash, dahil tumanggap ng cash, and credit sales for the amount of the sale, 50,000. If it is on credit, then the debit goes to accounts receivable and credit goes to the sales account title, 50,000. The sales account is a revenue or income account to be reported in the income statement. So tulad nung nabanggit natin kanina, under a merchandising concern, the more common account title for revenue or income is the sales account. Not unlike doon sa ating service business wherein depending doon sa nature ng business kung ano yung account title na gagamitin. This account is always credited at the sales price of the inventory sold. Accounting for sales returns and allowances. Nabanggit na rin natin ito kanina. When sold inventories are returned by customers or when customers request for a reduction from the price of goods delivered and the seller accepts the return or grants the request, a credit memo is sent to the customer. We have explained kanina what a credit memo is what a debit memo is. The effect of sales returns and allowances is to reduce the amount of sales, correct? Deduction siya. And the amount of the receivable from the customer if it was made on account. To illustrate, assume Eric Cruz a customer returned merchandise previously sold to him for 10,000. The journal entry would be sales returns and allowances 10,000, credit accounts receivable. This would be once again, communicated to the buyer, okay, through a credit memo na sinasabi mo yung nakadebit dito na accounts receivable ko patungkol sa sa'yo krenik credit ko na. Because I am granting your request na mabawasan yung payable mo sa akin. So yung nakakredit dyan na payable mo patungkol naman sa akin, i-debit mo na para mabawasan. So debit memo credit memo. Once again. If the sale to Eric Cruz was on cash basis isoli mo yung cash niya. Debit sales returns and allowances, credit cash. So 10,000 pesos. Okay, However, if the cash is not refunded, the entry to record the return would be as follows. Sales returns and allowances, credit accounts receivable. Okay? Accounting for sales discounts. Credit terms encountered in sales are similar to those discussed in accounting for purchases. So, parang baliktaran lang. Cash discounts on sales is usually allowed only on cash basis. Usually allowed on cash basis settlements. Whether cash discounts will be allowed on non-cash settlements or on partial payments will depend on the agreement as we have said. Cash discounts are computed on receivables, net of returns and allowances. So here are a few transactions, tatlo lang, January 10, 2020. Kanina, yung sa illustration natin before, uh, tayo yung bumili. Ngayon naman, tayo yung nagbenta. Okay? Selling activity na kasi tayo. So January 10, 2020, sold merchandise to Carlo Luna on account, 22,000. Terms, 2, 10, and 30. January 15, si Carlo Luna nagsole. Okay? Something which was previously bought for 2,000. Carlo Luna again, January 18 this time, paid his account in full. So very simple yung ating illustrations. Our principle is that the illustration should only show the basic concepts. They must not complicate things. So itong mga to, simple lang. But you do not expect that in your quizzes, in your exams, in your seat works, as I always say, na ganito ka simple yung ibibigay ng teachers mo. So watch out for your in-class discussions also. Okay? January 10, 2020. Accounts receivable, Carlo Luna, 22,000 sales, 22,000. Siyempre, nagbenta ka on account, eh di, that would be debited to accounts receivable. January 15, 2020, sales returns and allowances, yung 2,000, accounts receivable, Carlo Luna. Very simple. And then finally, nagbayad siya nung January 18. So, ang tanong dyan, nahabol ba niya yung 2% discount? Okay? So, if it was sold on January 10, ang 10 days would be January 20. E 18 pa lang, nagbayad na siya. So, naturalmente, nahabol niya yung 2%. Okay? That is why your collection would not be the full 20,000 but net of the discount. As we have shown you on how to compute the discount already at saka kung paano din yung shortcut. Multiply mo na lang ng 
0.8%, para matanggal mo yung 2%. Mas mabilis yun, okay? Cost of sales or cost of goods sold. At the end of the accounting period, the merchandising business should determine the cost of the merchandise it has sold for the period. This is called your cost of sales or cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold is deducted from the net sales to arrive at the gross income or the gross profit. Here is a format on how you compute your cost of goods sold, okay? Merchandise inventory beginning. Ano ba yung merchandise inventory beginning? O self-explanatory. But to expound further, merchandise inventory beginning was the previous period's ending. Kung ano yung hindi nabenta nung nakaraan and you're starting a period anew, ibig sabihin nun, yung hindi mo nabenta nun, yun yung pangumpisa mo for the current period. That is the merchandise inventory beginning. Cost of goods purchased, according to the uh, items that we have dictated dun sa mga nakaraang pages, deductions from your purchases our purchase returns and allowances, purchase discounts as defined previously, okay? To come up with your so-called net purchases, alright? Your freight in is an addition to your purchases. Here you have this amount to be added to that amount to come up with the so-called total goods available for sale. Less the merchandise unsold for the period, then you have your cost of goods sold or your cost of sale. Okay? Illustration of cost of goods sold. Maureen Chavez of VCT Company compiled the following information for use in determining the cost of goods sold. Here, you have the following amounts. From net sales of 198000 up to the merchandise inventory ending of 37000 You look at your book, we have the same book. Alright? So, kung ano yung page number ko dito, yun din yung page number dyan sa hard copy na Mo. So, titignan mo. I'm just guiding you once again. Net sales 198 up to merchandise ending inventory of 37,000. Your cost of goods sold, tulad ng nakasaad dyan, would be 116,540. Okay? Computed. Following the format that we, have that we have provided, merchandise inventory beginning of 63,000 plus the purchases 92, deducted from which the returns, allowances, and discounts and added yung ating freight in na 1,500 90. So, 63,000 plus 90,540 less the ending of 37,000. That must be 116,540. Okay? The cost of goods sold is deducted from the net sales to come up with the so-called gross profit or gross income. The net sales being computed by deducting from the gross sales the sales return, sales allowances, sales discounts, tulad ng na-discuss natin dun sa previous pages. Okay? So, we have here 81,000 460. Accounting for Value Added Tax Under the Expanded Value Added Tax or EVAT law in the Philippines, a 12% value added tax is levied or charged by the government to the buyer for every purchase of goods or services unless exempted by law. The VAT will increase the amount paid by the buyer but it should not increase the cost of the goods purchased. Correct. A separate account called input tax is debited for the VAT paid. When the goods are sold, the VAT will increase the amount to be collected from the buyer but it will not increase the amount of the sales recorded. Output tax is credited for the VAT collected. So if you're buying, the related VAT must be input tax and when you're selling, the related VAT must be output tax. Of course, we would not discuss this extensively as you have your taxation subjects in your higher year levels. You have your income taxation, you have your transfer and business taxation, and others pa. Doon sa business taxes, doon mo discuss my encounter more extensively and in-depth yung value added tax. As for now, ito muna yung ating dapat malaman. At the end of the accounting period, the input tax will be offset. Ibabangga mo siya doon sa output tax. The difference is either VAT payable or prepaid tax. Okay? If the input is higher than the output, the difference is prepaid tax. So, pagbaliktad naman, the difference will be VAT payable. Ayan. VAT illustrated. January 2, 2, 5, 10, 10, 20. On January 2, the entity purchased merchandise for cash, 112,000 including VAT. January 2, purchased merchandise on account from Rex Trading, 224,000. The terms 210 and 30. January 5, sold merchandise for cash, 201,600. January 10, sold to Al Picasso merchandise for 168,000 on account. Terms 1 over 10 and over 30. January 10 again, paid Rex trading full payment for the purchase on January 2. And finally, January 20, collected in full payment from Al Picasso. So you have here, buying or purchasing activities, selling activities also. And then later on, the collection. 
When teachers like me teach in front of a live audience, we derive satisfaction to some extent from the interaction with students. Yung mga simpleng pagtawa mo sa mga jokes namin, they mean something to us. They make us happy. But teaching in front of the camera is a different thing. We don't even know if you're there. We don't even know if you're listening. So a simple like dun sa ating video or a simple present sir, nandito po kami nakikinig, we are watching sir, will inspire us. When teachers like me teach in front of a live audience, we know that you are there. But teaching in front of the camera is not merely sharing our content. It means sharing our time, our devotion, and above all, our passion. So, yung simpleng pag-subscribe mo sa amin, it lets us know that you are there and we are here to continue what we are doing. So, ngayon pa lang, nagpapasalamat na kami. Diyan sa yung subscription, uh, it inspires us. It, since it inspires me to wake up every morning, prepare discussion materials, and continue what I am doing. So, thank you so much. Please continue sharing and liking and subscribing. Thank you. Journal entries for the preceding transaction. So, noong January 2, paano natin i-journalize yung alin? Yung purchase ng 112,000 including the VAT. Okay? So, kailangan ihiwalay natin yung VAT. Tulad ng sabi natin kanina, it will increase the amount to be paid but it must not affect the purchases account title. Kasi nga, ihiwalay natin. Okay? The journal entry would be debit purchases, debit input tax, credit cash for this respective amount. So, 112,000 and 112. How did we compute that? 112,000 divided by 1.12 would give you the base figure. Okay? Remember, nang sabi kanina, yung 112,000 daw, kasama na yung VAT. Ibig sabihin, kasama na dyan sa loob niyan yung 12%. Remember also, that any number divided by its own percentage or ratio brings you back to the 100%. Kung yung 112,000, eh, kasama na dyan yung 12%, ibig sabihin, that is 112%. Okay? And the base figure, being the base, must be 100%. The VAT is 12%. Sabihin, if you divide 112,000 by its own percentage of 112%, then you'd be able to compute for the 100%. Any number divided by its own percentage brings you back to the 100%. Okay? Big sabihin, the VAT here is 12,000. Ayan. Tulad ng pinakita naman natin dito, this is just another way of doing it. There are several ways to kill a cat. Ayan. Figurative lang yun. Ha? Do not kill your cat. Ayan. January 2. Purchases, input tax, accounts payable. Nag-purchase uli rito. Ano masabi kanina? Ah, January 12 ba yan? January 2. Ayan, January 2. Ulit. Purchased merchandise on account, 224. Okay? 1,000. Terms, 2 over 10 and over 30. At tignan natin. 224,000. Ang assumption, VAT inclusive yun. Okay? Divided by 1.12, then you'd be able to come up with the 100% following the same logic and procedure here. 200,000, 24, 224. Ayan. Alright, mga kasama? January 5. Sold merchandise for cash, 2 01600. Ayan, nagbenta ka naman. So, ang assumption, kasali din dun yung VAT. Okay? 102,600 is the 112%. So, dividing it with its own percentage brings you back to the 180. Ibig sabihin, yung 180 ang walang kasamang VAT. So, debit cash, credit sales, credit output tax, following amounts. Next, January 10. Sold to Alpicaso merchandise for 168,000 on account. Nagbenta ulit. So, same procedure. Okay? Debit accounts receivable. This this time, on account. Yung 5 pala kanina, for cash. Okay, ito naman, on account. So, same lang. Pagkakaiba nga lang, dito, accounts receivable naman. Sales, tsaka output tax. Same exact procedure. Okay, pagdating naman nung isang 10, babayad naman tayo ngayon dito. Ano bang issue dito sa pagbabayad at saka sa pangungulekta? Yung po kasi, discount na either ma-avail mo or hindi, dito yata na-avail. Okay? Yung discount na ma-avail natin, ihihiwalay mo din or ika-cancel mo din yung related VAT. Okay? Yun yung konting komplikasyon. Hindi naman siya mahirap talaga. So, yung na-avail mo na discount, yung related VAT doon, ika-cancel natin. So, kung pinurchase siya ng January 2, 10 days yung term, ibig sabihin, 2 plus 10, calculator, very good. Ayan, 12. Hanggang January 12, ibig sabihin po pwede pa yung 2% na discount. E 10 pa lang. Ito, another transaction ito for January 10. Nagbayad na. So, nahabol na yung 2% discount. So, debit accounts receivable, hindi yan. Yung pangalawang 10, yan. Debit accounts payable, Rex Trading, 224,000. Credit cash for the net amount. Credit also purchase discount for 4,000. And input tax of 4,012%. 
Ayan, so paliwanag natin. Paano ba nangyari yung ganoon? Yung accounts payable, naturalmente lahat yan mawawala. 224,000. Yan yung ating credit kanina. Alright? Ito yun. 224,000. Out of which... There is a purchase discount of 2%. Saan mo ibibase yung 2%? Huwag doon sa 112%. But, doon sa 100%. So, kanina, na-resolve na natin that the 100%, tingin dito, sa ginuguhitan natin, ay 200,000. Yan yung basihan ng 2%. Yan yung basihan ng 2%. So, the 2% of 200,000 din is 4,000. Ngayon, yung related VAT sa 4,000, kakanselin natin. Okay? Pansin mo, nakakredit yung input. Tax. Usually, input taxes are, the account input tax is debited. Kita mo dito, oh, naka-debit siya. Tama ba? O, oh, pagdating dito, kinakancel mo. Debit doon, credit naman dito. Kinakancel mo yung related tax, doon lang sa discount. Okay? 12% of the 4,480. Yung 219,520, yan lang yung remaining amount. Okay? Yung natitira. Credit cash. Yun yung babayaran mo. Alright? Same is true, pagka naman, ikaw yung nangulekta. Okay? At nahabol naman nung bumili, yung discount, kakancelin mo din in your recording yung related amount of tax particularly the VAT so debit cash debit sales discount debit output tax credit accounts receivable yung credit sa accounts receivable uh yan yun. Yan yung naka-debit natin kanina na accounts receivable. So, ikikredit mo para mawala siya completely. Ayun, no? naka-debit. 168,000. Dito, ikikredit mo. Are you following? Are you following? Okay? Yung discount, nahabol nga ba niya? January 20 na ngayon? Yes? O, 20. Nagbayad. E, ano ba yung discount natin dito? 1%. So, 10 plus 10, 20. Eksakto. January 20. Yan. Nahabol nga niya. So, ibig sabihin nun, 1% of, huwag yung 112%. Okay? 1% of the 100%. The 100% is 150,000. Tulad nung pinakita natin kanina. Tama ba? Ayun. 150,000. 150,000. So, kakancel mo din yung 12% nung 1,500. Kaya nga 1,500 nandito. So, that's 180. Note 1, note 2. Basically, yan yung binabanggit na natin kanina, yung explanations natin. Tignan na lang natin yung note 2. The difference between output tax, input tax is recorded as VAT payable. It is due for payment on or before the 10th day of the next month. Computation of VAT payable based on the above transaction. Output tax noong January 5, 10, and 20. Correct. You can check that, okay? Output tax is credited on 5 and 10. Tama ba yun? Yes, 5 and 10. Yes. Kaso pagdating noong January 20, may kinancel tayong portion. Kaya nakadebit siya dito, okay? 180. Kaya deduction dito. Ganun din naman dito for input tax. You can just trace dun sa transactions above. Okay? 39,420, 35,520. The difference is payable kasi mas malaki yung output. Pag mas malaking input, alam mo na, prepaid tax naman yun. Okay, class. So, that's the bell already. That's it for this meeting. So, ganun-ganun lang, class. A few minutes of your time every day. Imbis na kung ano-ano yung pinapanood mo, just make it a habit to watch our videos bilang tulong na rin dun sa sarili mong pag-aaral. Why? Kasi tatandaan mo, hindi lahat ng nababasa mo ng mag-isa ay maririnig mo. At hindi din lahat ng mga naririnig mo ay mababasa mo. Tulungan yan. So, with that, See you in our next meeting. See you in the next lesson. Thank you.